Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Zimmerman Podcast, episode 124. Today is week 12 in our new series, The Path Back to You. If you're new to this series, we're taking one year to discover how to become who we are meant to be. Each month, we dive into a new topic, and this month is exchanging ego for soul. Today, we're talking about how your body is your oldest ally. Let's get started and take this next step on the path back to you. All right, you ready? Let's do it. I'm Jessica Zimmerman, and this is Zimmerman Podcast. I'm a serial entrepreneur, mom to three, and professional oversharer who has spent a decade building my business and helping others do the same. From wedding floral design to business education, features in Martha Stewart Weddings and Forbes magazine, and even writing and publishing my best-selling memoir, Sleeping with a Stranger, my business has kept growing, evolving, and changing year after year, just like me. Because the best thing about building a strong business is the freedom it gives me to live a full life. And that's what Zimmerman Podcast is all about, sharing real, transparent, in-the-moment reflections about how to live a life build a business, and lead a family through the good, the hard, and the messy. That's what we're doing each week right here on Zimmerman Podcast. Welcome to the show. In part one of this chapter, Exchanging Ego for Soul, we talked about how obsession with our bodies and the physical form can expand our ego, feed our obsession with how we're perceived, and distract us from nourishing our souls. Today, however, we're going to give our bodies the credit they deserve. Because when we learn to honor our souls, the body can be one of the greatest sources of wisdom, working in tandem with our souls to direct us and lead us on the path back to our true selves. Our bodies aren't evil. They're not bad. There's a reason we're not disembodied souls floating around a spirit world made of fog and twilight. But We are often so busy telling our bodies what to be, what to do, and what to look like that we forget to listen to their inherent wisdom. When you've retrained your mind to trust your soul's truth, your body becomes your best ally. Let me tell you what I mean with a little throwback story involving a 14-year-old, Jess. When I was a sophomore in high school, A senior boy asked me on a date to the movies. I truly do not understand why or how I got permission to go on this date. First, because I had good Southern protective parents who didn't have a very just make home she's sure by 11 kind of vibe. And secondly, because I didn't want to go. I don't remember why. Maybe I thought it weird that this near adult wanted to spend social time with a freshly minted teenager. I'm not sure. It was almost 30 years ago, but what has stood the test of time, what I can remember like it was yesterday, is the sinking, sickly feeling I felt in my gut when I thought about going to the movies with him. And guess what? I ignored it. Maybe because he was older and therefore I guess that somehow made him cooler and my ego's voice was louder than my soul's truth, but I went to the movies with him and I sat there with a resting bitch face, arms crossed, legs drawn and tight. My body language was fully stay away. I am off limits. At one point he mimicked me and made fun of my crossed arms and grouchy face. Trying to play it off, I said, I'm just cold. Wrong thing to say. Best way to warm someone up is to Put your arm around him, right? So that's what he did. And I spent the rest of the movie praying for the credits to roll so I could get the hell out of there. We never went on another date. I had ignored my gut. And while nothing disastrous happened that night, I knew that for some reason, I didn't feel safe around this person. And I'd ignored it. I think most of us have stories like this. Times when we've listened to other people's advice or society's expectations instead of honoring what our very bodies are telling us. And every time we do this, it's like we're whispering, 
She can't be trusted. She can't be trusted. She can't be trusted. No wonder our bodies quit on us. We abandoned them long ago and the stakes just get higher and higher. I recently shared on my Instagram a few stories from mentoring clients of mine of how our bodies often scream at us and we ignore it. I kept their identity private, of course. I am such a big proponent of vulnerably sharing stories because I believe we see ourselves in those stories. We can relate to them. And oftentimes, we don't realize we're going through a similar thing until we hear it from someone else. I'll link that post in the show notes and description, and I highly encourage you to listen to it. Okay, back to it. When we damage a trusting relationship between our mind, our soul, and our bodies, we end up punishing our bodies because they're the ones making all the fuss. Some of us starve ourselves so we can prove that our minds have control over our bodies. Some of us use abuse or harm our bodies through violence, drugs, or alcohol because it feels easier to manage what our bodies experience than to experience the reality of what our bodies are telling us. We use food and medicine and drink to self-medicate because sometimes our bodies are just too loud. And we fear that if we actually stopped and listened to them, we would never be able to piece ourselves or our lives back together again. And sometimes it's easier for us to trust our bodies when they warn us of something bad, but that same trust, it doesn't always apply when our bodies recognize something good. Some of us, we are so used to being hurt that we don't want to trust when something beautiful might be headed our way because we don't wanna be duped we don't want to look foolish. When you feel like you're losing your mind, I'm here to help you restore your soul. A few years ago, I woke up and felt like everything in my life was a lie. I didn't recognize myself or any of the people around me. For the first time in my life, I questioned everything I had ever been taught or told. I didn't know what was true anymore, and I felt like everything I knew was slipping away from me. I went through a complete dark night of the soul, until I was forced by something much more powerful than me and my fears to stop running from myself and start facing the truth. That the pain in my life wasn't coming from the world around me, but from the pain inside me. I remember thinking, what if the cause of your pain and the cure for your pain is the same? you. That's what my program, The Path Back to You, is all about. Not starting over, but starting again on a path that will return you to yourself, a path that will heal and refine you, a path that will break you and make you whole. When searching for answers to what felt like an all-at-once, completely sudden, never-ending list of questions with no answers, all I found was the advice, just sit with yourself and heal. All the answers are inside of you. And I remember thinking, gee, thanks, that's helpful. I know I need to heal, and I'm willing and ready to do the work to do that, but how? Where do I begin? Well, it took some time, but after years of therapy, researching on my own, trial and error, mess-ups and setbacks, I found my way back home, back to myself. In The Path Back to You, I share with you my own personal story of struggle and trauma as a sacred offering. My hope is that through my story, you can better see yourself. I share with you my darkest moments and the steps I took to find my light, the light I had dimmed for most of my life. Throughout all the heartache I've endured, I've finally found peace, and I want to share my roadmap with you. If any of this resonates with you, trust that this episode found you for a reason. Trust the divine intervention. Those brave enough to have embarked on a healing journey, know how incredibly lonely and painful it is. I remember feeling completely isolated, like I didn't even belong in this world anymore. It was scary as hell. But I want you to know you are not alone. While I fully believe healing is a solo journey, 
I think it's totally okay to have a roadmap and a pathfinder who has gone before you to guide you as you return home to you. Join me on the path back to you. Click the link in the show notes or go to jessicazimmerman.com to learn more. And just for you, podcast listeners can get 15% off with code PATH15. That's P-A-T-H-1-5. So we meet someone who feels like home, who feels both safe and exciting. Every time we're around them, we find ourselves scooting a little closer. Our eyes seem to naturally find each other in a crowded room. We lean toward them when they speak and our hearts start pounding with excitement when we think about seeing them again. But we've been hurt before and our friends warn us to take things slow. So we back off or we talk ourselves out of it altogether, or we are offered our dream job, seemingly out of nowhere. It's in a new city that we've always dreamed of living. And before we can even think about it, we're doing a little celebratory dance in the car. But then the more we think about it, the more we start talking ourselves out of it. Relocating is inconvenient. The job might not pan out. I don't even know if I have the experience to do it. Both of these examples are just as much self-abandonment as ignoring the warnings our bodies give us. And if we keep training our mind and our souls to mistrust our bodies, our bodies rebel. We get hurt, we get sick, we develop chronic illness and inexplicable pain disorders. I talk about my own experience with this in my book, Sleeping with a Stranger. I'll link that for you in the show notes and description. Living a deeply soulful life requires you to trust your body. All day long, your body is talking to you. Are you listening? If you want to hear other stories of learning to listen to your body's intuition or need some practical tools to start listening to your body, I invite you to join my course, The Path Back to You. Thank you so much for joining me today as we journey together on this path back to you. I hope what you heard resonated with you and you can take it with you into your week. If you're looking for more resources for the journey, you can visit jessicazimmerman.com. While you're there, be sure and check out the Path Back to You page. I'll see you right back here next week for our next leg of the journey.